Hello, I'm Dr. James McNair, and in the next few minutes, I'd like to uh, tell you how I got interested in integrative medicine, uh, which is basically def defined by combining mainstream medicine with alternative medicine, and, and things that go in kind of in between those two things as well. So, um, I was raised in Arkansas, born and raised in Arkansas, was uh, educated there at the University of Arkansas and University of Arkansas Medical School, all of which was very good education, very good training, things that I really enjoyed. Thought I was going to be a surgeon after uh, going to my internship in San Francisco. Um, and I, I knew for sure I was going to become a general surgeon. Well, that changed, and that's a long story that's in my book. <laughs> we'll talk more about that in a moment. But, but the um, so when I was drafted into the army, I was drafted as a preventive medicine officer. So here's a person that's traditionally trained mainstream medicine, all of a sudden is going to do preventive care. Well, during that time, I did develop a passion for preventive medicine. And it, uh, and it was mainly designed to keep the healthy, the uh, uh, military men and women in as good a health as possible. And so to prevent all kinds of diseases that they would be facing largely at that time was in Vietnam. So I developed a passion for keeping those soldiers healthy and, and that expanded to generalized public also um, and, and but mainly because of what was hel helping myself become healthier so here after my internship i was um, not low sick but i was i was not real healthy at the time i was gaining weight uh, i had, was able to quit smoking which was good but but i i thought i should get in better shape um, just for other fun things like tennis and that kind of thing so i began a process by the way, uh, I wanted to introduce my book real quickly, Dr. McNair's Smart Way to Healing. And you will see in a moment, hopefully, what, what I'm talking about. Um, but the, um, the first thing I found out was that good nutrition can make a difference. So I invited uh, another doctor to give a class on, uh, on stopping smoking. Uh, during that class, she was a Seventh-day Adventist and she taught nutrition. Uh, the value of good nutrition for all kinds of reasons, uh, particularly improving your health, but to help a person actually stop smoking, uh, she felt like, and it was true, that if, if, you, if you discipline yourself in good nutrition, you can also help stop smoking and other bad habits. Well, uh, so for me, good nutrition was the first thing I learned, and I learned about, in fact, <laughs> I was eating at the time, I was eating one meal a day uh, before I went to her class, I was eating one meal a day, started at six o'clock in the evening and wound up at 11 o'clock in the evening when I, you know, just continually eating. Well, I started lear learning to eat a good breakfast, less of a lunch, less of a supper, and um, certainly eating, changing my, my food choices to healthier foods. So I learned good nutrition and it made a difference for me personally. The next thing I, shortly after that, I learned about um, at, at the uh, Brooks Air Force, Air, Air Force Base, I saw a doctor talk about good exercise. Well, right before he, I saw him talk, I, I was actually uh, going out to get in better shape, I thought, and I went out and ran a mile as hard as I could, just like I used to do in high school. Well, running a mile as hard as you can when you're out of shape, guess what it does? It makes me sick throwing up, you know, hor horribly sore, didn't want to exercise anymore after that. But then I saw uh, how to do it properly, and I started jogging on a regular basis and found myself uh, having some fairly natural skills in that regard, long distance running. And so I wound up uh, in marathon running and all that. But for a long time, I just ran two or three miles a day and felt great lost weight for the first time I had a 30 inch waist and 30 inch pants instead of 34 inch waist and 29 inch pants but anyway so it, it really helped me a lot to to trim down feel better more energy all the things that I, I wanted to have 
combined with good nutrition, turned out terrific. I've, I've got better and better for myself personally. I also taught those things at Fort Benning, Georgia, where I was the preventive medicine officer. I taught exercise and nutrition uh, through, through um, at the time we had a newsletter type of thing. So we started a running club and all that. And, and it was a, a value, I think, not only to the troops, but also to the officers and other people that were on the, on the base at the time. So next thing came for me, though, I, I went from uh, the military. I went into a residency program. Instead of going into general surgery, I wound up in ophthalmology, which was still a surgery, but it was a wonderful conversion. It was my, my goal to become the best ophthalmologist I possibly could. The nice thing about ophthalmology is we have wonderful mainstream medical techniques and medications and surgeries to help a person get healthy eyes. And, um, and it, was, it was wonderful uh, four years of training uh, at the University of Arkansas again. And from there, I went to Rogers, Arkansas. Still, I was uh, uh, exercising fairly well, good, fairly good nutrition at the time. I had I'd fallen off a little bit from that. But um, some events of life, happened during that uh, three and a half years in Rogers, Arkansas, that led me to changing my life quite a bit. And that is where my spiritual life began. Um, I had a good friend that introduced me to uh, Jesus Christ. And although I had been a Christian all my life, I didn't really understand the impact that a good spiritual life can have for a person. Uh, that, that allowed me to deal with the next subject I have here on the board is stress because uh, the, the events of life, again, were, were very stressful at the time. And, and, and so anyway, I led me to, to changing a lot of my life at the time. I had met some good friends who, who wanted to start a preventive medical center and emphasizing these four things. And I thought, oh boy, this is gonna be great. Uh, we're gonna be highly successful. Everybody wants to be healthier. Everybody wants to be in good shape, so it won't be hard to do. Well, it didn't prove to be quite that easy. In fact, um, I've been called a pioneer in, in preventive care and, and integrative medicine. But, you know, pioneers, uh, like, for instance, in the old days, uh, those are the people that get shot in the back with an arrow and that kind of thing, the pioneers. So it, it wasn't as easy as I had hoped, but I learned a lot. And during this time, for instance, uh, by the way, during this time, I moved back to Little Rock, Arkansas and uh, and uh, began the practice of preventive care. There is called the Human Performance Center is what we called it. And we had some impact, but we didn't have the, the, the way the financial backing and all the all the things that go into that to make a success. But during that time, I learned about chiropractic care. Uh, chiropractic is considered alternative care, although the chiropractors don't feel that way at all. They feel like it should be mainstream medicine. And by the way, I kind of agree with that because chiropractors help me tremendously. have helped my wife, helped many, many people get healthier by just uh, manipulation, careful manipulation of the spine and other joints to, to help the healing process and, and restore improved health. So chiropractic I learned about, kinesiology. That's a strange thing to learn here. Kinesiology by chiropractors particularly, where you can actually, if you like, uh, hold sugar in your hand and you uh, press, pull down on an arm that should be held still, sugar will almost always weaken that arm. And, and whereas, like if you held kale in the hand, you, you would hold good strength. So kinesiology is a very interesting technique. I would write this down, read about that, because uh, many doctors, have the ability to do this and, uh, and help people a lot, finding out the foods and, and vitamins and this kind of thing that they can take. So kinesiology proved to be interesting. I never really was good at that, but at least I learned that the concept uh, is very valuable. I also learned about energy medicine. I had uh, what was called an electroacuscope, where I could actually uh, find a person's acupuncture points with that uh, about reading the, uh, the electroacuscope, and I could treat acupuncture points with energy, um, frequency, energy, 
and I could help a person's pain by that. And, and I was involved at the Human Performance Center. I was involved in that sort of thing. And so energy medicine is big and, by the way, is a tremendously important thing. So energy medicine, again, there's a lot more said about this in my book, which I hope you will uh, pursue in the future. Next is food allergies. I learned uh, from some friends that uh, food allergies are terribly important for people. Uh, that is true until this day. In fact, uh, some of the testimonials that I have um, uh, involving uh, one, one patient in particular that was having tremendous uh, COPD or breathing problems, bronchitis would send her to the hospital every three months. You know, that sort of really serious problems. And I told her about food allergies, particularly dairy and wheat, which are my, by the way, my food allergies also. And I found out that, that off of those products, uh, I could breathe better, had my sinuses were clear. Uh, this lady, Patricia, is also the same way with her food allergies, getting off those foods, uh, got her out of the hospital, basically, so she doesn't have to go all the time to the hospital. I also learned from a friend about hypnosis. Hypnosis is one of the things I talk a little bit more about in the book. It's a wonderful way to teach people how to relax better and be much more uh, in, in charge of their own well-being by learning how to relax and focus better on the positive thoughts and, and integrating that into the brain so that our thoughts and our beliefs and, and the uh, emotions become healthier and healthier as we go through life. It's a process. We all have been raised different ways by different parents who, who uh, by the way, I had the best, but I, and they were wonderful people. And, and so I didn't have a lot of real deep seated problems, but it helped me tremendously to get my thoughts and beliefs lined up healthier. Again, more from a spiritual standpoint, but also from the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions got healthier and healthier as I, as I learned more about how to help myself. And that was also consciousness is in this too. And there's a lot more, again, in my book about consciousness and how to help a person be thinking properly and emotions you know, controlling the emotions so that you're not always angry and always bitter and all those kinds of things that, that uh, keep a person from being healthy emotionally. Uh, then I learned a little bit about acupuncture. Um, now, by the way, after <laughs> these processes went on, uh, around this time, I'm, I'm giving this more or less in a, in a uh, chronological order, after uh, when I was learning these things, I was actually getting back into ophthalmology. And at that time, I thought, I thought, well, look, I've learned so many good things that can help a person's health. I suspect it will help a person's eyes as well. So we took some alternative, considered alternative medicine, integrated that with the mainstream medication and, that, and surgery. And, uh, and basically, the goal being to get a person as healthy as they can, not only general health, but their eyes as well, of course. And so that gave me a, a sense of uh, accomplishment, I guess, when I, I realized, hey, I'm going to be able to help people that have not been helped before with their dry eyes or with their uh, macular degeneration or their glaucoma. Uh, we're going to be able to get these things controlled because we're using other, other aspects of health to help the mainstream medical approach and the combi combining of that into integrative ophthalmology, if you will, integrative ophthalmology being, being taking both of those things and putting it together to help a person's sight. And so one of the things we found out is acupuncture. Acupuncture can be a big help for the eyes. I've had many people, testimonials, show that acupuncture can help their macular degeneration, their glaucoma, and a lot of different things along those lines for the eyes. But I'm telling you, from head to toe, it can help a person. Now, I personally, by the way, talking about toes, I had um, uh, what's called plantar fasciitis of the feet. Had acupuncture done three times for that. Didn't help me a bit. Not one bit. But I tell you, acupuncture works for a lot of people. So just like everything else I'm mentioning, nothing helps everybody. But you can almost always, if you keep looking and, and trying different things, you will find something that will make a difference for you. 
Next thing was biocranial. Now this is actually a technique that uh, doctor, uh, a good doctor friend of mine, chiropractor friend of mine, taught me biocranial. Uh, for me, it wasn't a big deal, but I've seen it help my wife tremendously. Uh, we saw people with all kinds of chronic headache problems. Uh, I had a young lady that was a skeet shooter and it helped her going from where she was having difficulty tracking the skeet to where she was like silver medalist in a, in a national competition. So she, she helped, was helped tremendously with biocranial. It's a technique of improving the circulation of the cerebral spinal fluid. So how important is that? Well, that's pretty important. Now, magnets. I have magnets all the time <clears throat> on me personally because like the other day I had a little aching, aching pain in my one of my Achilles tendons. I was able to put the magnets there the pain was helped tremendously. I was really surprised. Now this, by the way, much of the training I'm going to be talking about, this training here came from Capital University of Integrative Medicine. So that's where I got my integrative medical degree. And, um, and so Capital University provided me with a, a wide range of things, most of which I have in my book. I'm just mentioning some of the ones that, that have impacted me personally and some of my patients personally. And one of them, again, is magnets. So magnets applied for me. I had an injured shoulder, for instance, put magnets on my shoulder, and I was able to sleep for the first time in six weeks. So it made a huge difference for me personally. <clears throat> Since that time, I've used it for other people, and it's made a big difference for them most of the time, not always. And just like, as I said, everything doesn't work all the time. But, but magnets, if you read about magnets, it can be a big, big help. Biomagnetic Science is a great website to look up Biomagnetic Science. It's very, very helpful. Uh, prolotherapy. Prolotherapy, now I mentioned my foot a minute ago, had plantar fasciitis. I learned how to do prolotherapy because my wife was helped so much by a good friend of mine who, who uh, was an anesthesiologist but also a pain medicine doctor. And he told me about prolotherapy. Please read about prolotherapy and prolozone because I'm telling you, I had that for my plantar fasciitis. If anybody's ever had, it feels like a, you're stepping on a tack when you get out of bed in the morning. That is almost always plantar fasciitis. And I had prolotherapy. The next day I was able to go out and run and it, it felt great. Uh, now that's, that's a pretty quick recovery, but most people in just a few days after having prolotherapy, either, either their back or shoulder or knee or foot is going to be improved if you need strengthening of ligaments and or tendons. So prolotherapy and prolozone, ozone actually combined with prolotherapy can be a tremendous pain relief and healing part of this. Again, this is discussed in, in more at length in my book. Uh, neurotherapy is an amazing way to help people. I've got testimonials, uh, hopefully on this program, testimonials of a lady, for instance, that had headaches, uh, had, had a lady with shingles. Uh, we did inject procaine, which is neurotherapy, uses procaine or novocaine, inject it under the skin, and it will influence the pain almost instantly. It, it almost instantly will knock out pain and help a person in the healing process. So that it does not, so the pain doesn't come back. Now, neural therapy, once again, for the first, this uh, lady I have on the testimonial, she said, oh my goodness, it helped me so much for about two weeks. And then it came back. We did it a second time. Didn't work as well the second time. Then she went on a food allergy diet and her headaches went away completely. So the com com uh, combination of concepts is very important. You know, one is more like an energy concept, the other is more like a food, biochemical, physiologic concept. But you combine these things, integrate these things, that's what we're talking about is getting every, every concept that makes sense, put it into an integrative medical facility or, or concept of physician, and, uh, and you'll get some healing. Another thing we found out was CoQ10. I, I found out that people were having double vision, droopy eyelids, a lot of it was due to statin drugs depleting CoQ10. Now I found this in, in, 19, in the 1980s when, when statin drugs became more popular. I also found that computers would cause trouble, not with CoQ10 so much, but computers would cause turning in of the eyes and, 
and all kinds of other strains for the eyes to focus well. So we, we began doing the CoQ10 supplements and it helped tremendously. Many people who were having, again, droopy lids, turning in or turning out of the eyes, uh, get the, on, on the CoQ10. It really is a big, big help. And I go into detail about that as far as the kinds of CoQ10 and, and all that. Well, well worth a read and study. And if you're, if you're having to take statin drugs for heart disease, please get on the CoQ10 as a preventive, if nothing else, to, to help you feel better, help you focus better. It can be a big, big help. This next one, this is a, uh, a challenging word, N-acetylcysteine. That is a, an amino acid that's a precursor to mucus. And mucus, most people think of mucus as what we cough up when we have a cold and that sort of thing. And that's true. But we also have mucus lining the inside of our mouth, our bronchial tree, our GI tract. Our eyes also are lined by mucus. In fact, are covered with the lubricant of mucus. And if you take this supplement, many people, and you'll have a testimonial later on that shows a person who takes this and their eyes feel so much better. They're not dry all the time. When she, take, when she stops it, it, the dry eye come, comes back. So when she started it again, dry eye went away. So it's pretty confirming that, uh, that when you use n it can help the dry eye problem. Next is NECO and TMJ. This is, <laughs> we call it NECO because this is something learned from the bio, um, bio what's it called? The, den the dentists that are biological, biological dentists. So biological dentists taught me this. Necrotizing infectious cavitational osteomyelitis. When you have, if you have an infection in your tooth or in your jaw, uh, at the base of your teeth basically is what we're talking about, those infections lead to a serious, serious problem, not only with your, your jaw and your teeth, but I'm talking about from head to toe because it influences acupuncture through, through acupuncture concept. It can affect the whole body. So it's a real important concept to read about, understand, find a biological dentist who can take care of this problem. Root canals that cover up, if you, if you have an infection, an abscess, and you open that and drain the abscess, you should not, in my opinion, you should not cover that up. You should not put another tooth, like a false tooth, into that into that area because it covers up the abscess. The abscess can go into the jaw more. That's called osteomyelitis. The, the last letter here, the O letter, is the osteomyelitis. And it's very serious, it's very dangerous, and it can cause many, many problems. So I've seen this kind of thing up close and personal with some family members, and, and it's really an important concept. TMJ also I've seen in our family members. That, that has pain in the jaw. This, I, I, I read about this as far as everything that we've mentioned here, it seemed like can influence the TMJ. There's obviously things that can be done specifically for it, but I would say don't have surgery as far as TMJ surgery it has not been a real good, in, in my limited experience, has not been a real good thing for people. But there are ways of getting well. There, there are ways of getting well by, by a proper occlusion and this kind of thing of the teeth. Prolotherapy works sometimes. Neurotherapy works sometimes. Acupuncture can work. So there's a lot of things that can be done for the TMJ problems. And by the way, TMJ not only causes headaches and pain locally, but again, it can influence the whole body. Just like malocclusion can. I've seen incredible things, uh, again, from biological dentists who... who uh, were treating literally a person in a wheelchair who was able, after having the proper mouthpiece put in, was able to get up and walk. I mean, that sounds incredible, but I'm just saying it, it can happen because malocclusion of the teeth uh, can cause a steel syndrome. What I mean by that is blood stolen, so to speak, to supply this painful area. The brain, the, the brain is the one that has to give up the blood, though. So you wind up having um, uh, cerebral problems, brain problems, because of something going on in your teeth. 
sounds incredible. I know it's, it sounds like it's impossible, but I, I promise this is worth a read and finding a biological dentist who understands this concept. Not all dentists do and, and don't agree with this, by the way. Uh, chelation is another thing that I've seen a tremendous amount of over the years. Uh, I don't do this now myself, but I have done for a number of patients. Plus, my wife and I have experienced personal chelation. What that means is chelation is removing heavy metals, supplementing at the same time with extra vitamins and minerals that will help the every enzyme of the body function better. So by removing he heavy metals like lead, for instance, is one of the common ones, aluminum, arsenic, uh, mercury is a big one and, and very hard to remove. But the, the heavy metals get into the cells of the body and bind enzymes so that those enzymes can't work properly. They can't let you body, your body function normally. So you get out the heavy metals and it's even possible to get mercury out. There's, there's other uh, chemicals that you can give IV and by mouth that will help get mercury out of the body. And so your body can start healing again. That's one of the principles in my book, by the way, is that if you take out bad things, put in good things, your body will heal. And that's, that's a very common concept in, in the integrative medical field. And biofeedback. Biofeedback is a simple, easy, safe. Uh, this is a little bit like a, uh, when you take a, a f truth. What, what's it called? When the, you take... Um, oh gosh, I've, I've, I've blown it. <laughs> anyway, biofeedback is like um, when you take a, a lie detector test. Lie detector. It's your, your body responds. You know, you've seen people take lie detector tests. I'm telling you that the reason it tells you because your body responds when your thoughts and, and everything are expressed in your brain, those results will go down to your hands and fingers and will uh, and by your heart rate, all kinds of different things will happen. So uh, biofeedback is the ability to learn how to control those things. And, and you can actually learn, you can train just a little bit like hypnosis. You can train your ability to, to respond to your thoughts and beliefs, and it can make a big difference for a person. I've had um, many, good, many good results with biofeedback. And then craniosacral treatment is a very nice, general way for chiropractors to help chiropractors or osteopaths or massage therapists a lot in physical therapy. A lot of people can do craniosacral treatment where it's very general care of the head and neck, but it will reflect all the way down to the sacrum. In other words, it, it can affect the whole body. And so that's another good technique. So what I, what I was saying a moment ago, all these things and more are in this, the book that I've written. I, I hope, uh, first off, I hope you understand the concept of integrated medicine, combining the best of mainstream and alternative to get the best results for your health. Um, some of the things pretty easy and straightforward like good nutrition and exercise, but some of these are much more complex and it's a little difficult still to find people who do all these things, but um, they're, they're available and probably hopefully in your community you'll find that. So anyway, I hope you'll pick up my book, Dr. McNair's Smart Way to Healing. It's going to be available on Amazon and um, hopefully it'll make a difference for your health and your life. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, this is Dr. McNair again, uh, finishing the presentation I started yesterday, um, and uh, because I left out one important aspect of some of the integrative medicine, uh, alternative medicine that, uh, that has been used. I first found out about this, frequency-specific microcurrent stimulation. First found out about it years ago from a Dr. Ed Kondrat that you may already know. And uh, Dr. Kondra was helping a patient of mine with her macular degeneration using this particular aspect of healing that can actually make a huge difference as far as introducing the correct energy into a person's body, uh, but with the proper frequency specific, meaning that there's a frequency for every part of the body. And if you find that, that particular frequency, you can help. Um, restore healing and restore, in this case, eye uh, function. So vision can be returned in macular problems and glaucoma. Those, those are the two main things that uh, Dr. Kondrat works with. 
Dr. Kondrat is not only a medical physician, ophthalmologist, surgeon, but he is also a classic homeop homeopathic doctor. So homeopathic doctor, the, the study of homeopathy, which I didn't list here, but homeopathy has been a big part of our uh, family uh, for a number of years. Uh, after learning about it at Capital University of Integrative Medicine, Dr. Kondrat has helped confirm the importance of homeopathy for healing again of the eyes, but also from, from head to toe, it can make a huge difference. So homeopathic medicine, again, is the, uh, if you want to call it alternative medicine, added to the mainstream medicine, really adds a lot. Dr. Kondrat, most of you probably already know, is an unusual doctor. He not only is unusual in helping people, but he's also an unusual doctor contributing to the rest of the world through mission work and this sort of thing. I'm talking to him uh, this coming Thursday. He's going to be in Africa on the Mercy Ship uh, doing surgery on people that otherwise could not ever afford to have surgery. And uh, so he and his wife, Lee, are extremely uh, dedicated to helping other people, not only through medicine, not only through homeopathy, not only through alternative medicine, but also donating their time and energy to doing uh, mission work like that. So quite an exceptional doctor, and, and Lee is an exceptional young lady, too, that are helping people around the world. So I wanted to put that little plug in for Dr. Kondrat. I'm sure he <laughs> doesn't need that, but he, I wanted people to know about that if you hadn't known. Um, and now that finishes up our presentation. Thank you again.